Two weeks ago, I bought the PlayStation 5 Pro. I bought this specifically for Gran Turismo 7 in PSVR 2. So, I bought it. I wanted to have a more enhanced experience on the PSVR 2. Um, I fully put out that, you know, put out that money, you know, in hopes that, you know, it would enhance the experience. And I've come to the conclusion, my friends, there seems to be a disconnect between gamers, PlayStation, and developers. There's like this weird disconnect somewhere in there. We as gamers, we feel like we're our $700 for a PS5 Pro, um, buying our preferials, you know, like a Thrustmaster T598 or a Fanatec or something along those lines, paying $600 for a PS VR2 headset, and then spending $70 for a game. We on that end feel like we are spending more money for, for these products. And so in our heads, we have this, we come to the conclusion that like we should have a premium experience. While on the other side, I feel like Sony thinks that they are giving us a, a, a bargain. I, I, I believe that now. After spending an hour and a half <laughs> in GT7 testing PSVR 2 with the new 1.54 update uh, patch that came out today for Gran Turismo 7, I do believe that PlayStation feels like they're giving us a bargain, even after all the money that we've spent, $700 for a PS5 Pro, $600 for a PSVR 2 headset, $70 for the game, and then I got my, I, 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 they gave me, like Thrustmaster gave me the T598, but I paid 900, well, $1,300 for a Fanatec DD Pro. Um, and, and the overall experience is pretty comparable between the 598 T598 and the Fanatec DD Pro on Thrustmaster or on GT7. It is just kind of hamstrung together. I guess it sometimes it feels really good. Sometimes it just doesn't. It just I guess it depends on the car, whatever you're driving. Um, after getting, you know, the T598 or the Fanatec dialed in, they're definitely usable. They feel fine, whatever. <sighs> This patch has zero update for the overall physics and your wheel support. So you're gonna be waiting a minimum of another month for T598 support for Gran Turismo 7. It, it does not have it. It literally still feels the same, which it's, it's not a bad thing, but it's not, I, I feel like it, I'm only saying that because I feel like it could be better. Now the Thrustmaster T598 100% hits the mark in terms of being at least comparable to other direct drive wheelbases in that i mean it literally functions and feels the same the only difference is this is a lot smoother and you can definitely feel the the gear jolt and stuff better so i mean there are some benefits to having a t598 over anything else in the market right now but there are also benefits to having you know more power like a like a dd pro or the logitech g pro so, I mean, it's kind of at that, that entry-level price point to where it's like, yeah, this is an awesome wheel. You definitely get a good feeling for it. But there also is a benefit of having more power. So, it's it's not like in this like world class of its own. It definitely feels, you know, pretty comparable in, in its current state to other um, direct drive wheelbases. Now, I reached out to Thrustmaster today to ask for some clarification because that's how I feel about it. It really does. It, it is in line with other direct drive wheelbases. So yeah, I, I can easily recommend the experience, but that's kind of a weak point for Gran Turismo. Out of, out of all of the wheelbases that I've used on this freaking game, the TGT2 has been the superior experience in my opinion. Now, you can take that however you want, whatever. I mean, if you just went out and bought a T598, I don't think you made a bad decision. Like I don't. If you, if you went and sold your TGT2 and bought a T598, then it's like, okay, you're, you're going to probably regret that a little bit. <clears throat> but if you kept your TGT2, there, there shouldn't be a problem. Get used to your new T598. It's an awesome, incredible wheel setup. And I think that it's, it's incredible. It literally performs 
on par or better than all of the other direct drive wheelbases that I have used on, on multiple games. I've been testing it on PC everywhere. So in terms of like the wheel support and everything like that, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's another update. It doesn't, it does not do anything to make that, that experience any better and thankfully not any worse. So it feels about the same. Now we need to talk seriously about the VR experience. Now I put out a video earlier today. I only had a very short time to play around with it. I was, I was able to do like eight, eight, eight laps or whatever. I mean, I, would, I just woke up, I, I rolled out of bed. I, I didn't even make coffee or anything. I went right over here, put my headset on and jumped in there to try out the new update to see what I could see. Okay, I, I barely tried a couple of things. I've had more time now. I've actually tried them and I can tell you what works and what doesn't for me. Now we are in the vibration. Oh, this is one more thing pertaining to the wheel because I had somebody in there trying to tell me, yeah, you gotta change your vibration function. It has nothing to do with the damn wheel setup. It's for a controller. I literally have it set at 150 for the vibration and it does absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing, nothing at all. So. We're going to go over here into the global experience. We're going to go to video output. Um, and then let me just boop. Let me focus over here on the screen. So if you come down here, my friends, you've got either pr prioritized frame rate or pri prioritized graphics. Now I tested both of these. We'll get back to those in just a minute. Um, obviously you can turn, um, this is going to be grayed out while you're in the headset. 8K supports grayed out while you're in the headset. And if you're on a 4K TV, the only, the only thing that is going to, I, I don't even think PSSR is active inside the headset at all. I, I don't think it's active. It, it's not active. So the positional reprojection settings for the PlayStation 5 Pro. If you read the little bottom banner right here, it tells you that it will enable this function resulting in a more immersive experience, but it may also cause unwanted visual effects. As you can see, mine right now is off. Let me bring this a little bit closer. See, so boy, so you, so you fellas can see. Mine is off right now. I have it off. Now I played this for a while with it on. And then when I turned it off, the experience got significantly better for me. So it might be something that maybe you like it, maybe maybe you don't. But so with it on, I was starting to feel sick. When I turned it off, that whole feeling of like nausea and all of that stuff went away immediately. And I was just like, yeah, this feels good. This looks good. It looks sharper and crisper in with, with it off if i turned it off it looked sharper the the road the texture in the road uh the detail everything like that there is a little bit of instability still in in the overall freaking image quality when it comes to psvr2 but it is a more robust stable experience that now so before because you know the psvr2 has the foveated rendering okay so foveated rendering is pretty much attracts your eyes and wherever your eyes look it's going to concentrate the pixels to that spot so it's like so it's like say say it's like 4k like where you're looking but then it's like 720p or 1080p over here the the it's not projecting the pixels to that spot it's keeping them all where your eyes are focused yes you can trick it and kind of look off one way and the other and you, you'll easily be able to see that like the lower resolution and stuff like you could see that before before psvr2 or before ps5 pro you could see that before like you could always look around and catch the blurriness no matter what you were doing like like you could see that blurriness while in the headset like you could see that and a lot of people blame it on the lenses whatever i mean your lenses your lenses still are going to introduce a little bit of blur it's like looking through I liken it to looking through like like glasses or something while while driving. That, that's what I, I mean, if I was to put on some reading glasses and drive a car, that's what it looks like to me. It just looks like I have glasses on. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, I don't even drive with sunglasses. I, I, don't, I don't like them because that's, that's the look, the effect that I'm getting. It's like I'm driving with glasses on. But when I look everywhere, like if I can, like in the, in my peripheral vision, when I am driving, that blur is gone. Like, I mean, there's, it, it looks more like a regular blur, but before it used to be like this, like smeary Vaseline kind of blur. And now it's just like the regular blur that you see in your peripheral vision. And then when you glance over and look around, 
it it's sharp everywhere now. So that's that's a, and that that was already there. <laughs> Already there, the day I got home with my PlayStation 5 Pro and tried GT7 and PSVR 2 for the first time. So basically is what I'm saying, guys, is there's absolutely no change from that till now. The only difference is you can turn off the reprojection or turn it on and you can select. I mean, obviously, you could select between the two modes before. And honestly, guys, I've got it in a performance mode right now and it absolutely is doing nothing to benefit that experience whatsoever. It... It looks the same. It looks the same to me. So I don't I don't know if I'm disappointed. I don't feel like I'm disappointed. I mean, like I've 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 been on this high with the PS5 Pro for the last couple of weeks. I mean, you guys have seen me making the content, like really excited about it, really happy about it, um, seeing what it can do. I haven't subjected myself to any of the games that everybody's freaking out about though. Like, I mean, honestly, I, I don't know. I I mean <laughs> I've been trying to accentuate the good. I've been trying to be like, yeah, this is good. This is good. This is good. Not caring about the price or anything else. I already bought it. I already own it. So what good does it do to me to sit and focus and worry about the price and, and, and complain about the price all day long? Like nobody cares or wants to hear that. They want to be hyped to the point where it's like, okay, I'm hyped enough. I'm going to buy it. You know what I mean? And then there's a lot of negativity out there. And, and I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this, from gamer to gamer, from consumer to consumer, here's the thing, man. Yeah, getting over that hump to go buy this thing is, is gonna be difficult right now because you have, especially if you're on YouTube or anywhere else and you're listening to the negative people, you're listening to the positive people, the positive people sound like shills, the negative people sound like they're just, they're nitpicking everything, but you're somewhere in the middle. You're somewhere in the middle. And you're like, gosh, I want it. I, I want it to be good, but I don't want to spend that money and have it not be good. And, you, you know, here's the thing, man. The sooner you get it, the sooner you're going to know what your comfort levels are, what your freaking, what your, what your pressure points are when it comes to new hardware. Some games are going to annoy the hell out of you. They, 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 there's always those games that are going to annoy you. Like, that's, I mean, like everything. Even on PC, with the top-end PC, there are still games that I'll buy, that I'll look at, that will annoy me visually. There's always that problem. There's always going to be that problem. It's, there's never, like, it's never going to be solved. Yes, there are some games. But then the games that you really like, the ones that are absolutely going to blow you away and make the purchase worth it. And we all have those. We are, I mean, you can go through and you can buy 50 games and have three of them. I'm the kind of guy that would buy a system for one game. I literally bought the PS5 Pro for Gran Turismo 7. So they're, they're out there. Like there, there are those one games that are worth buying a whole system for. There, there are. And usually, thankfully, being a console gamer throughout the generation you usually find more that make the experience just as worth it but you're gonna find bad games along the way too so as it sits right now guys um i i i i, I do wish that um that the, that the gt7 experience could have been just a little bit better maybe maybe a little bit sharper i was really hoping to see uh, PSSR used in vr but i do not think that that is the case um it literally looks exactly the same from what it looked before before the update came out. So I don't think PSSR is being used and I don't know if it would actually help or hinder the experience anyways, to be completely honest. If it was gonna help, it would probably be slathered all over it, but apparently it's not. It literally looks the same. There's there's still the instability, like when you're when you're driving by. Um, fences look absolutely sharp and crisp, and like there's a lot of crispness in this overall image now that just wasn't there um, before PS5 Pro, but it is there now, and it does look good. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna review the uh, 2D experience. I'm not like I don't even care. I've already seen Rowdy's um, little <laughs> Minecraft trees, so I'm like, Ugh. yeah, dude, like. I'm not, I'm not here to point out the bad negative stuff of the PlayStation 5 Pro. I pointed this shit out for four years. I, I talked about it. I beat my head over, I, I, I beat myself over the head. Like, I don't want to be part of the negativity when it comes to freaking gaming. I don't, unless it's NVIDIA, then I'll be negative. But I, I don't, I don't want to be negative about anything. Like, I don't even care, man. And, and it's, it's one of those things where it's like, look guys, you gotta have, you're gonna have to ask yourself, 
you know, is, is that worth it for you? For me, the PlayStation 5 Pro, what it does for GT7 with, with PSVR 2, I, I'm okay with that. I, I, I'm definitely okay with that. I, I was a little bit like, uh, I don't know, you know, when I was sitting here, you know, right before making the video, I was like, gosh, dang, man. And, I, and I'm asking myself, and I'm, and I'm in my head, and I'm like, dude, how do you really feel about this, man? People want to hear how you feel about this. Are you okay with the way it, it looks? Is, is it bugging you? And I mean, dude, I literally sat in there for an hour and a half in VR, driving around Watkins Glen, just looking at it. And I'm like, dude, if it was bugging me, I wouldn't have been in there for an hour and a half. I'd have been in there for 10 minutes and I would have jumped out to make a hit video. And you know, you know what I mean? Clearly, I like it. I've been playing this a lot since I got the PlayStation 5 Pro. I was playing it before, obviously. And, you know, I, I will I will give a lot of credit to, like, Thrustmaster and stuff for providing PlayStation wheelbases because it has not necessarily forced me to get back on the PlayStation platform, but it has given me a, a reason, you know? I have wheelbases that I can create content on the PlayStation platform, which is cool, you know? It's like a win-win. I get to play my PlayStation... I get to show off Thrustmaster's cool, incredible um, wheels and stuff. So yeah, it has made things a lot easier. The TGT2 is absolutely incredible for freaking GT7, but you're not going to go wrong with a T598 or a Fanatec or a freaking Logitech. You're going to be okay, you know? That's just the thing, man. It's like, there's so many brands out there these days, guys. And it's like, you know what, man? They all get the job done. They all get the job done. Even the G923 gets the freaking job done. So guys... If you like this content, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.